Top one is basically, it's an introductory level course. It teaches you all your writing skills that you'll need in your future classes. Top one is an introductory class that kind of introduces you to the elements that helps you write papers. It really gets you a firm basis into writing on the collegiate level. Basically a bunch of building blocks that you use for other classes when you need to write papers. At the University of Arkansas, students are required to take a number of general education classes that will prepare them for success, both in college and in their careers. One of those required courses is Composition One, a class that helps students learn how to write, think, and communicate clearly and persuasively. Composition One is the introduction to university level writing, thinking, critical thinking, and research. The course prepares them for the type of work they're going to be required to do in most, if not all, of their university level courses. Comp 1 is a freshman level required course that is designed to help students become better writers and be able to write papers at the college level. Composition 1 is the first course in a two-course writing sequence at the University of Arkansas. In Comp 1, students should learn how to write effective sentences, paragraphs, and essays. They will learn to summarize sources, critique sources, analyze and synthesize sources, and they will learn to research. In a lot of ways, success in Comp 1 comes from doing the same things that you should do in any college class. The most successful Comp 1 students do the following things. Go to class. It's really important to go to class. It's important to go to class. Well, it's important to go to class because everything that you learn in Comp 1, it builds on each other. You get feedback on what you're doing. You also get to learn a lot of things. So it's very important to go to class. It's important to go to class because if you're not in class, you miss out on some really good opportunities to workshop with other students, uh, learn some strategies for writing, and sometimes even just be able to get the assignments that you're supposed to be doing. The composition program itself does not have an attendance policy. The attendance policy for each section of Composition 1 is at the discretion of the individual instructor for that section. However, we do require that our instructors, instructors have an attendance policy in place. I have my participation grade built into that, so if they miss class, they don't get those points. The way that it works is you get credit for when you are in class, you don't get that credit when you're not in class. Definitely make sure you go to class because it really helps to pay attention and know what you're doing, because then that way you feel confident in the people you're writing. Get to know their instructor. You should get to know your instructor because that way they'll know you on a personal basis, and whenever you have a problem, they'll know how to direct you, how to fix your problems, or your assignment. Getting to know your teacher is really important because it lets you have a more personal relationship where in case something does go wrong and you need to talk to them, you can go to them and they'll help you. It's important to get to know your teacher because they're a really valuable resource and they'll help you on your paper if you're struggling. And the more you get to know them, the more comfortable you are with them and the more comfortable you'll feel asking for help. It's important to get to know your Composition 1 instructor and the best way to get to know your Composition 1 instructor is to meet one-on-one. -on -one. So it's a very good idea to go to that instructor's office hours. It's important for me to get to know my students and for my students to get to know me just because it helps when it comes time to do conferences um, or if you have a question or concern, we have that rapport built up so that it's a lot easier to work together and it's just a more comfortable environment. Read the course documents. You go to class on day one and you may not get anything from your instructor except the handouts. It's very important to hang on to those. Composition handouts, such as your syllabus or policies and procedures handout or assignment descriptions, are basically your contract as a student with your instructor. Your instructor puts what he or she expects out of you on that syllabus and outlines what he or she plans to do for the class. So the documents the instructor gives you, they usually hold all the information that you'll need. The syllabus is really helpful because in case you forget something, you always have something to go back to. There's a lot of information that's in the syllabus, and basically when you're writing your paper, you might be like, oh, what do I need to put in my paper? Well, it's all in your syllabus. And the course assignments really help when you're stuck on that essay, and you can really just back, look back at the prompt and just figure out where you need to go from there. Keep on those. Those things are important because those are really your link to the class when I'm not around, which is all the three days out of the week. And so if you look at the syllabus or you look at the paper assignments, you know what's coming up, you know what's expected of you, even if I'm not there to tell you. And so that goes back to if you missed a day of class and your paper is due the very next day, um, you actually have some sort of sub substantial piece of information that can help you in your work. Do all their work and turn it in when it's due. You have to do all your work on time. It's important to make sure that you get your stuff done in an orderly manner and you prioritize and time manage yourself. 
Deadlines are important because really they help the flow of the class. Uh, each paper builds on one another. Beyond that, it just gives us this common ground where we move from one thing to another uh, and we're all on the same page. If you don't make a deadline, you're not going to get your paper turned in on time, which means you're going to lose points. Well, I do have a late paper policy where I deduct 5% of their grade uh, for every day that the paper is not turned in. Each individual instructor sets their own requirements for turning papers in. Sometimes instructors will not accept late papers. And so if you turn a paper in late, you will receive a zero for the assignment. Other instructors will accept the paper late, but with a reduction in grade. And if your paper is going to be late, communicate immediately with your instructor. Do their own work, honestly and ethically. Academic honesty means playing by the rules, and that includes giving credit to other people when you use their ideas, um, especially in a Comp 1 class would be um, if you use another person's ideas, you want to make sure that you give them credit for that, and you would do that through citation. Um, other uh, probably more obvious ways in which we would define academic honesty means not um, cheating on somebody else's test, looking at somebody else's work and copying it, um, and things like that. The Western world of academics values individual creativity and individual knowledge making. In order to uh, protect that value and in order to encourage that in our students, uh, we want to make sure that everyone is responsible for their own work. So if a student is suspected of academic dishonesty, the professor will report this infraction to the Board of Academic Honesty. The student may have to go before the Board of Academic Honesty. They may have to uh, take an academic honesty seminar. Um, after that, repeated infractions could lead to uh, something like a zero in the course, or it could even lead to expulsion from the university. Students who do well in Comp 1 make the class a priority in their lives, and they devote a lot of quality time and effort, making sure that their work in the class reflects their best ability. Feel free to pause this video presentation now and discuss with your teacher and classmates your thoughts about attending class regularly, getting to know your instructor, setting and following deadlines, and being an ethical and honest student. Once students understand how to succeed in comp class in general, they need to understand how comp classes work. The University of Arkansas's composition program requires that Composition 1 students write four major papers throughout the course of the semester. These four papers are called the Summary Critique, the Explanatory Synthesis, the Argumentative Synthesis, and the Research Paper. Yes, right now our curriculum is designed to focus on four types of assignments. There are also exams. There's a midterm essay exam that students will take. There may be a final exam for Composition 1. That's up to the discretion of the instructor. There are also in-class assignments, like um, in-class free writing or small group work. There may be presentations or out-of-class group work. And there are also homework assignments where you may be asked to read things outside of class and come, come to class and talk about them. I have a few smaller assignments. That assignment might be something like meeting with me for a conference or writing a response paper to some sort of community event that I require you to go to. Uh, but the, the rest of the assignments are just in-class uh, exercises and quizzes based on the reading that we've done. I do. I have two exams. I've got a midterm exam and a final exam. Uh, both of those are, are in-class essays, and you generally have a pretty good idea of what the topic might be before you come in for the test. The paper assignments are the major assignments for Composition 1. In Composition 1, the four major paper assignments are a summary critique paper, an explanatory synthesis paper, an argumentative synthesis paper, and an argument analysis paper. Since every assignment in Comp 1 is really designed to prepare you with the most basic skills that you'll need in your college career. Well, the idea behind these assignments is that they really are these kind of common denominator skills that you're going to need as you do writing both in higher level college courses and in the workplace. In every field where you use other people's research, you're going to need to make sure that you have a clear understanding of the arguments. You're also going to need a clear understanding of how those arguments relate to other people's arguments. And you're also going to have to be able to think critically about whether or not those arguments work. Uh, we begin uh, the four assignment sequence with a summary critique. And the summary critique is intended to get our students to understand that they need to not only be able to interpret what they read, the sources that they encounter in the research process, but they also need to be able to report them faithfully and accurately and briefly, hence the object of the summary. 
In addition to that, uh, we have them engage in a critique, which is simply an evaluation of those sources and the information. So once a student uh, manages that, that particular task, we assume that they acquired a skill that will help them in the research process. In other words, they will continue to do this, not only in this course, but in many other university courses that they take. They will be required to read outside sources and be able to report that information um, in a concise, useful way to their audience. So that's the object of the first assignment. Uh, the second one is the explanatory synthesis. And what that means, is, as the name indicates, they have to explain what uh, the sources had to say in relation to a particular topic, but they also have to combine that information. And that's what synthesis is. It is a combination of separate sources uh, or separate elements in general. So what the student does is read, let's say, three sources. Uh, they uh, are then required to explain the position of those sources in relation to the information or topic that they're addressing. And uh, the idea there is that when they begin their own research process, they will have to do this as well. This is a skill that they need to do. They will read source one, source two, source three, and they have to be able to come back and tell their audience, and they have to be able to bring that information together in, in a logical and coherent way. And that's what the synthesis is. The explanatory and argumentative synthesis papers both work with multiple sources. Explanatory synthesis takes sources that disagree and asks you to synthesize those into one concrete argument. But the explanatory synthesis does not want you to include your own opinion. So you're synthesizing the sources into an objective document, and I shouldn't be able to tell what your opinion is when I read your paper. From there we move to the third assignment, which is the argumentative synthesis. And once again, they're required to do the same thing, but whereas the explanatory synthesis require them to be neutral, to not show their bias, but to in fact engage in an open-minded reading of various sources, the argumentative synthesis allows the student to, once again, summarize, synthesize, critique, and as a result of those skills, take a position in relation to an argument. So that's why we call it an argumentative synthesis. The argumentative synthesis paper presents different arguments about a particular topic, and the student is supposed to contribute to that argument. And so the student writes from a subjective point of view and includes his or her own opinion in that paper. Uh, the last major writing assignment is the um, was generally just called the research paper. We're calling it the argumentative analysis, but I'm thinking that a better term now is a propositional uh, research paper. And I want to use the term propositional because now they have to propose something new that doesn't come from their sources, but it comes from them. Mm -hmm. This gives them the opportunity to be creative and to actually engage in the kind of thinking that they hopefully will continue to do. Paper number four, the argumentative analysis paper, is a more in-depth look at a particular topic. Typically the student will be asked to choose the topic and to locate most, if not all, of his or her sources for that paper. And the student has to actively engage in the research for the paper and to figure out how to organize the paper. As I said, the sequence of assignments really build on one another. So in the summary critique, you're learning how to look at a source critically, understand the argument that the author is making, and then look at their argumentation and see whether or not it's really sound. And then from there, you learn how to compare uh, a couple of sources at once, and that would be your explanatory synthesis, uh, where you don't really come to some sort of value judgment on whether or not their argument is valid. But then when you move on to the argumentative synthesis, you're juggling even more author positions, and you're also starting to think critically about those different arguments and which one carries more weight. And then in the research analysis, uh, you're really bringing your own stance to bear uh, based on multiple readings from multiple authors. We've got four major papers that you're going to write in Comp 1. One of those would be a summary critique, another would be an explanatory synthesis, another would be an argumentative synthesis, and then the final one is a researched argument analysis. Feel free to pause the video again now and discuss with your teacher and classmates your thoughts about how these four types of assignments are similar to or different from the types of papers you have written in your previous classes. When writing the four papers for Comp 1, students should make sure that they develop an effective writing process. Well, we generally present the stages of the writing process as pre-writing, 
invention, drafting, and then revision. The writing process is this really weird animal. It's, it's hard to define and it's kind of different for every student, but it involves things like pre-writing where you brainstorm and you outline and you, you think uh, a little bit more abstractly about your assignment. An initial move in the writing process is pre-writing. As part of pre-writing, you should read the assignment, read and understand their sources, use different approaches to pre-writing, such as free writing, outlining, webbing, etc., and choose an interesting topic. And then you would move into your drafting and your research where you're learning um, from different sources and you're kind of getting a feel for what's being said about your topic. And then you'll move on to writing that rough draft. The next move in the writing process is drafting. You'll need to start drafting early. A good rule of thumb is to figure out how much time you think you'll need and then double that time. You should also avoid fluff or filler information. Just say what you mean to say outright. For your paper's introduction, make sure you include a thesis statement and an essay map. That is, what you will say and how you will say it. Your paper's conclusion should draw conclusions. It should tell your readers what you have shown and what your reader can now understand that he or she couldn't before. After you've gotten some feedback on where you might take the paper, then you would go on and revise it further, um, which might mean completely retooling the arguments. You might be back on the pre-writing stage. To revise means to focus on clarifying the big, major issues of your paper. Writing a successful paper almost always involves writing multiple drafts. Some instructors require students to submit a rough draft with their final product. Um, so it's this kind of back and forth uh, sense of thinking and writing, thinking and writing. And it's important to get a firm grasp of what this might look like for you because that's what makes writing these research papers possible. The final move of the writing process is editing. When editing, you should look at your paper's formatting and check for spelling and grammatical errors. Editing is a vital step, and quality editing makes both you and your paper look more professional. And given those four general categories, one of the things that I'd like to say about the writing process is that it doesn't work the same way for everybody. There are some people who are multi-drafters, and they generate one draft and then revise and then generate another draft. And there are some people who really feel that they only need to generate one draft. They, they think about this a lot and gather information and then by the time they're ready to write, they write and they generate just one draft and say it's done. Um, so there isn't one particular process that everybody has to follow. But from our experience in the scholarship in the field, we know that these are the major steps that most writers take. Feel free to pause the video again and discuss with your teacher and classmates which parts of the writing process are most productive for you. If at any point in the writing process you get stuck or confused, get some outside help. The way that I've designed my Comp 1 course is to give students a variety of outlets uh, for when they get stuck on an assignment or at some specific point in the writing process. Well, you always have your other classmates in case you just need information about something. So I make sure that my students give each other their contact information um, so that they can get in touch with one another if they're having trouble. Some classes have peer groups that can help you with your writing process. Instructors also have office hours. The biggest, like, easiest way to get help is just to go and talk to your professor. You can email them or meet them in their office hours. You can go to your professor and they have office hours you can go talk to them. Instructors like to help students. Instructors have a number of students, though, so you have to kind of be proactive. It's a good idea to meet with your teacher one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's a required conference or you're just dropping by to ask a question, because when I'm in the classroom with you, I'm working with all 23 students at once, but when you come by, I can actually devote some real attention to your concerns, your specific needs. Okay. Well, certainly they have their instructors, but we also have the library. Best start is the library. The library here is amazing. There are lots of reference librarians. The University of Arkansas Libraries has many resources for composition students. The library's catalog can be searched by students to find books and journals. Scholarly articles can be found using our databases. Librarians are on hand to answer any questions students may have. There's many ways to contact librarians, including coming to the reference desk in person, by phone, text, chat, or email. And in addition to that, we also have the Quality Writing Center. There's this thing called the Quality Writing Center. The Quality Writing Center is also a great place to go 
to get help with the writing process. They have you out of line. The Quality Writing Center is a great resource for students here. We help students in all phases of the writing process. All right, making an appointment at the Quality Writing Center is really easy. Um, students are able to access the scheduler online and they can make their appointment through their online software. You can schedule an appointment for a face-to-face, person-to-person tutorial, or you can also book an appointment for an online tutorial in which you upload a paper and the tutor will devote an hour of their time to um, reading your paper, offering comments, and they'll email that paper back to you. Yeah, the staff at the Quality Writing Center is very qualified, so I think the Quality Writing Center all in all is a, a fantastic resource for students at all levels in the university experience here at the University of Arkansas. Students should look to other people and get some, some good, honest feedback on their writing. There's all your resources. You always have your other classmates. Go and talk to your professor. The library. The quality writing center. The composition program at the University of Arkansas is designed to help you become a better writer, thinker, and communicator. In order to get the most out of your comp classes, remember to attend class, get to know your teacher, finish all assignments on time, and work diligently on all your paper assignments. Doing these things will ensure your success in the program and will prepare you for success in your other college courses and in your career. After the video, discuss with your teacher and classmates any thoughts you have about how you intend to succeed, not only in college composition, but in your college courses in general.